If you're trying to figure out the best way to run your virtual end of your showcase, spring recital, or any other kind of online virtual performance or event, stick around because I'm going to show you how I ran a virtual live stream gala all from my computer using Vimeo and OBS. It had pre-recorded content, live speakers, and a live performance. Coming right up. What's up everyone, it's Jay Su. Welcome to the channel. This is where dancers become more proficient and efficient in the digital space. This is another video in my how I built this series where I take you behind the scenes into projects I've already finished with the idea that these are not in-depth tutorials per se on all of these programs, but I wanna show you how I went about creating it so you have a better starting point if you're trying to do this on your own, or maybe you just like seeing how something was made. While these aren't in-depth tutorials, I'll make sure I put links in the description to all the resources I thought were super helpful. And if you'd like me to make a video breaking down any of these things, especially like OBS or using Vimeo for live streaming, let me know in the comments and I will put that on the list. Also, I realize this is going to be a lot to take in. So I will put everything in time codes in the description if you want to skip around. Also, if you just want to get a quick recap to kind of see how I did this, go to this time right now and let's get started. So this was a huge undertaking for me and the whole team at Dance Play. So I need to say this right off the bat, even though in the title it says how I did all this work. It was not on me. It was a team of people at Dance Place, but that's just not as a uh, clickbaity <laughs> as uh, how I help people run a live stream gala. I did a lot of the programming, but I did not do all of this on my own. So I just want to say that right now, shout out to the entire team and staff at Dance Place. I'm so lucky to work with all these amazing people. Every year, Dance Place has a fundraiser gala to help raise money to support all the programming that we do. I mean, because we do a lot. We have performances, we have community events, we have youth programming, we have adult classes. It's a lot of stuff that goes on and we need a lot of support. So the gala is a very big event. It's all hands on deck. Normally it's at our building. There are performances, there's a dinner component, there's a dance party, there's a step and repeat so people can take pictures. It's a really fun event for our community. This year it had to go completely virtual and that opened up a lot of questions and unknowns and it was very stressful. And as the person that had kind of taken on the live streaming components when it came to performances and virtual events, I did some research and I decided to go with OBS streaming through Vimeo. And there are a couple reasons for that. So let me break that down. So OBS is what we would call our encoder program, similar to StreamYard, which I've made a video about. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out. And then Vimeo was our end platform. That's what we streamed to. And we used Vimeo instead of something like Facebook or YouTube because we were worried about copyright issues. Issues. Facebook and Instagram are very strict when it comes to music copyright and we knew some of the artists we were going to uh, have for this event might be using music that normally would be fine in our theater because we have that covered but when it's online it's very different and Vimeo just seems to be more lenient or they're I don't, I'm not sure what the deal is I haven't run into any issues so far with Vimeo live streaming I've talked to a colleague before and he said he got uh, not banned, but he got like kicked off or something for a little bit. So Vimeo does pay attention to that, but it's different and it's, you can seem to get away with more. So that's why we went with Vimeo. I will say it is more expensive. You need the premium Vimeo plan in order to live stream, but it has definitely been worth it. I just feel more secure knowing we're going through Vimeo. Vimeo also lets you embed the player onto your website. You can get a private link with a password or an unlisted link. So it's not totally open to the public or you can make it available on Vimeo or, or anywhere else you want. So there are also a lot of privacy options, which is really nice. Also, all the live streams that happen through Vimeo get automatically archived on Vimeo. So you have a copy of your entire live stream and it's really high quality. We were able to stream it, everything in 1080p. And so I'm not gonna play the whole thing obviously, but here's a quick montage of some of the different looks that we ended up using for the gala. These are all just straight cuts, so all of the animations and effects that you're gonna see in this montage were done through OBS. We created custom Snapchat and Instagram filters for you to use. To use the Snapchat filters, just open the app on your phone and take a- Happy 40th anniversary, Dance Place! We are so grateful for the incredible intern experiences we got to have when we first moved to DC. Good evening, everyone. 
My name is Christopher K. Morgan. My pronouns are he, his, him, and I'm the Executive Artistic Director of Dan's Place. I am coming to you live tonight from the theater at Dan's Place. Please welcome the Dan's Place Youth Performing Company. Wake to show off my moves tonight. My good friend, aka my brother Dan Bloom, aka DJ Glowstick. And now let's check on our progress towards our fundraising goal. So, how are we doing? I think we might be. Oh, I'm watching the numbers rise. I give in to the toss and turn of life. And the magic man behind the camera that I think everybody knows, if you're not already subscribing to his YouTube, you should be Jonathan Sue. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now that I've talked about Vimeo, let me talk about OBS real quick. So OBS is a free software, so that's great, and it's available on both Windows and Mac computers. The one downside to OBS is uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not as user-friendly, maybe, as something like StreamYard. But on StreamYard, you can't play videos that are longer than five minutes long, unless you do something like screen sharing, which then decreases the quality, and sometimes there's uh, desyncing issues, all that stuff, similar to like a Zoom share screen. But if you uh, upload it and play through their video clips, it has to be under five minutes. But if you are able to do that, it's perfect. So if your event has all pre-recorded content that is under five minutes and you need like a live speaker to introduce each video, StreamYard, I would say is probably a better option. But I knew that a bunch of the videos were going to be over five minutes so that was not an option so I went to OBS. OBS is also great because there are a lot of plugins that make it really versatile and you can really mess with things and there were a couple plugins that I really really liked that I'll talk about later on in this video. Once you have OBS set up it's very easy to use you just have scenes for all the different videos and uh, live moments that you need and so once everything was set up I didn't run it so another staff person did but all she had to do was click from one scene to the next and it would transition from a pre-recorded video to a live speaker to another video to the next video etc etc so once everything was set up it was actually fairly easy to use all right talking about equipment real quick this one was a little crazy so right off the bat as I was exploring I got really excited with OBS I have a Windows computer and in the theater we have a Mac and uh, when we were doing some tests we learned that some plugins weren't available on Macs even though it was available for Windows and that got a little messy so I ended up bringing my desktop computer into the theater it was just easier I could program at home and then bring it in and know that it was already gonna work and not have to remake everything um, and then we <laughs> and it's gonna seem extra but I had three screens hooked up to my desktop to run everything. On top of that, we had another computer running sound and monitoring sound, a sound board, another audio, uh, uh, shoot, I forgot what it's called. Like an audio cart, no, um, like another, like an audio mixer, I think. It's not called a mixer, I'm sorry, Alex, I should know this, but a, a, another audio device. <laughs> uh, and then we had another laptop to run the lights in the theater for our live performance. And it was, it was just a lot of things. I think I'm actually missing something. But real quick, here's a video of me doing a Instagram Live at the end of our event, kind of showing you behind the scenes. So I'll play that real quick. Let's show what's going on back here. So we have a computer over here to monitor audio. We have a mixer, an input. We have three screens going into one computer to run the live stream and then one computer here to do all the lights and a laptop for the outline of the script all right real quick before i end the live stream just to show you so you saw the theater setup we have lights we have two cameras all that we also had two separate stations in the office but this was his station so we got the computer we got lights we had a microphone walkie talkie the full setup for delante here he was calling in, and then we were, we were uh, capturing that through a program called OBS. And then... Hi. So this is where Hannah was all night, and currently hosting the party. The reason I had so many screens was 
we were doing so many different screen captures that I'll kind of go into a little bit more detail later on. But basically, I would have one screen was OBS, another screen was our gala fundraising page, another screen was our captioning and our StreamYard broadcast. And I needed all those up just for peace of mind because I, if I minimize it and I pull it back up, some OBS might, uh, you know, not recognize it or things like that. So it just made me feel better if I had everything that I needed pulled up the entire time. For most of you, your events, you probably don't need that. However, I will say two monitors is probably a minimum. It, it's just easier, way easier to be able to have OBS and then your other screen can be everything else you need depending on your setup. But two monitors definitely helps for any kind of live streaming event. And I'm glossing over the specs because most of you are probably not going to need this kind of equipment anyways. But for our live streaming things, we had two cameras and two capture cards. I used my Canon 5D Mark IV on a tripod and then we had a Canon Vixia, I forget the name, 800 I think, to kind of capture our speaker. So we had one camera pointed at the stage, one camera pointed up to the back of the house because we were also trying to keep everyone separated for COVID safety reasons. So, so there's a lot, a lot going on. We also had a staff person in our upstairs office and another staff person in our upstairs studio who are calling in as live callers to talk for a section. But to connect my cameras to my computer to act as webcams, I used two capture cards, one for my DSLR, one for the camcorder. So I had bought them originally to use for teaching on Zoom. So it's my my pin capture card that ooh, can you see it there? It's connected to my computer, so it's a little awkward right now. Uh, and then this Elgato HD 60s. If I were to do it now, uh, I probably wouldn't have even gotten these because Canon just came out recently with their uh, webcam utility software that lets you use your use most Canon cameras as webcams without needing a capture card. But what's great with this is you can then use it even if it's a Nikon camera, a GoPro, other cameras. I normally use the MyPin the most and my Elgato is kind of a backup in case something happens with the MyPin. But using these capture cards allowed me to get the best quality video for the live stream. If you're interested in learning more about capture cards, I do talk about it more in one of the videos I made about how to get the best quality video for your Zoom or Google Meet class. So I'll link it up in the cards above and I do talk a little bit more about capture cards and all of that in that video. I'm gonna gloss over the audio stuff just because I'm not as clear on exactly what we did. Uh, someone else on staff who's much more knowledgeable in that was taking care of it. But basically we had an audio interface and soundboard to kind of balance audio levels of all the different things, but we had microphones connected to the audio interface, I believe, and both of those were connected to my computer through the headphone jack, so uh, it was picking up all that sound, and then we were also connecting my computer to both of those through the microphone input. That way, it was all the sound was channeling through the soundboard and interface, so we could adjust levels if needed. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Alex who was doing that is like a boss. He's crazy good at all that. So I just let him do it because I had to worry about other stuff. <laughs> um, but if you want me to get more into like OBS, Vimeo, all that stuff, let me know and I'm happy to do that. I'm also happy to answer questions in the comments as best I can. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Now let's jump into OBS. One last thing before we do that, I want to say there are two versions of OBS. There's OBS Studio and then there's Streamlab OBS. There are pros and cons to both. Streamlab is the newer version. It's more streamlined. It's I think it's a little bit easier to use uh, with the interface potentially, but I decided to use OBS Studio because it has plugins, which Streamlab does not. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at OBS, that there are two versions and there are pros and cons to both. I, I haven't really used both a lot. I'm not super proficient. I just did enough research and tests that I felt comfortable using OBS Studio. So I can't really tell you the differences, but they're both really solid. I have both installed on my computer. I'm actually using Streamlab OBS right now to record my screen so I can show you how to use OBS Studio. So there you go. Let's jump into OBS now. So 
Here we are. Over here are your scenes. And basically in every single scene, you have your sources over here, right? So right now I'm in my video black. I did some of these just to make transitions smoother. But if I wanted to add something like video or my webcam, you just go here and you can add any one of these. Some of these are audio. Some of these are window captures, like screen grabs, basically um, text video. For example, if I go to my countdown, so we started with a 30 minute countdown and now the video is playing. It's muted right now, so uh, it's not going to, you're not going to hear things while I'm talking. But if I go to here, I'm going to pause this video for a moment. Uh, you'll see here, this is the video for this countdown. This is for our logo, which you can't see right now because it's a white background. Here we go. Oh, that's me talking. That's awkward. Uh, here, this logo is here. And then this is all the videos that are playing. Media Controls also is a really great plugin that I found. Uh, basically, it lets you uh, pause, rewind, all those things when you need to. So for example, here I could skip to the next video and you're not hearing now because I muted it here just because I didn't want the audio to be playing while I'm talking. Uh, but I can pause the video, I can skip forward. And so this was super helpful, especially when it came to things like the countdown where it might have gotten to, let's say, the end of our 30 minutes, right? And I'm like, oh shoot, wait, we actually need five more minutes because we ran into a tech, uh, tech issue. So while the, these videos are playing, I could go and like drag it back and give me five more minutes in our countdown. So that was, this media controls was really, really useful. So if you go here, I loaded all of the videos I wanted to play and then it would just go in order. I could have looped it if I wanted to, I could have put it on shuffle, but uh, there were specific videos that the team wanted played more than once or to make sure it didn't uh, cut off at the end of the countdown. So I, I just timed everything out. So this lasts roughly 30 minutes. I think it's actually more like 32 minutes, uh, but that way everything only played once and then once it got to the end, it stopped playing. So there are some duplicates in here, but it's super easy to do. So if I did this from scratch, you just have to make sure you have VLC player, the 64 bit version installed on your computer, but that's available. I believe on both Mac and windows you go here, you go to VLC video source, call it whatever you want. And here you go. I'm going to not loop it, but I would just here to add a file or you can go here to, to delete a file and then you're good to go. So for example, if I go back here again, I could also click here and reorder it. So move it up or down the list or delete it or add another video. And so now it'll, it'll restart once you do that, but then you could always skip ahead to another one or something like that. Oh, and if you haven't seen it already, this video was our Fortitude launch, which I did make a another um, how I built this video about that. Very cool, I, in my opinion. I thought it went really well. I'm very proud of how this video turned out, so make sure you go check that out in the cards up above. Anyways, moving on, I'm gonna pause that. So that's basically it. So now when you click, so if I go click here. Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I'm on the marketing team at Dance Place. Again, awkward hearing myself, but you click to the next scene and it goes, the transitions, are done through a plugin called Transition Matrix, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Just kind of want to go through the very basics of this first. Something that is very useful to know is here. So obviously you wouldn't want to mute the video when it's actually streaming because then there's no audio for your audience. But if you go here and you click on the advanced audio properties, and that was a right click on that gear icon, um, you'll see here it says monitor and output. By default, it's monitor off. That means you won't hear anything on your end, even though your audience will hear it. So watch, if I go here, right, and I press play, I can see there's audio playing because it's moving here and I can always, you know, make it quieter or make it louder, but I'm not hearing anything right now, right? There's nothing going on because we turn the monitoring off. If I go here, if you do monitor only, that means only you'll hear it and your audience won't hear it. So I don't know why you do that. If I go to monitor and output, on a bigger screen, click on the expand icon now it's playing. on the bottom right. 
if your video stops. So just to know, that was really frustrating at first. While <laughs> I was like, I can't hear it. So and we would keep this on just to make sure things sounded okay on our end. And uh, good thing we did because it saved us a few times. So as far as pre-recorded video, that's how I did it. People sent me footage, or I filmed it and I edited it together and I put it in either as a playlist or as a single source. So if I want to do just a single video like this, I would just go here and media source. And that way I, it's a single video. Hit OK there. And now I just find the file I want to do. And then when you click on the scene, it'll automatically start playing. For live video, this is the setup. I'm gonna gloss over it very quickly and I'll come back to this later, I promise. But I wanna kind of finish talking through uh, OBS to Vimeo. But here, this is kind of weird. Um, but I had a captioning here, which is a screen grab. I had my uh, capture card here, which is technically is this one. I call it JSU. Uh, it's a capture card, and then I had the logo here. Some branding. The Motu. This is the audio interface. So this is where I would be getting the audio from to make sure we can hear myself. And this is a thing that's not playing, as you can see, it's invisible. But I have put it there just in case. Now to connect OBS to Vimeo, you're going to need to go to settings under stream. You'll see here you have a server and you need a stream key. So now we're going to go to Vimeo real quick. So if you have the premium plan, you'll have live events, this tab here. When you click on that, it shows your events. So I'm going to create a new event. Let's say test. I'm going to say it's happening one time. Let's say it's going to start there at this time. Sure. So private link means someone needs to send you the link for you to be able to see the live stream versus you can make it with a password so people can find the link maybe but they need a password to view the stream or you can make it public or only for yourself not sure why you do that uh, but there are a lot of different privacy options for this which is really nice so uh, normally i do private that way people can only see it if they go to the dance place website for example i go to next and now here you can see you have a lot of control over this. So uh, this is the link over here and my camera is blocking the screen so I can't see. But if you click on this, you can enable the chat. You can put a video description in. So if people go to the Vimeo page, the, um, they'll see this. Because I scheduled it, it has a countdown for me and I can upload a thumbnail if I want to. Over here, where you get the embeds, you this is where you would get the codes to embed it on your website. And here, I'm gonna kind of gloss over this, but you can customize the video player a lot. So if I just look at this, I can turn, I can take away the full screen option, take away volume control. Uh, if I want to, I can say, don't show the title, don't show the byline, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all these things you can really customize, which is really cool. But this is the, what I want to show you. So here is your like control booth, right? So instead of webcam, you want to go to RTMP. And now if you've seen my uh, video on how to connect or how to live stream to Facebook or YouTube, you know never to share your stream key. So don't share this because if someone gets it, then they can hack your stream. But you're going to copy this. And I like to always click preview stream before going live. What this does is if it's not selected, when you hit start streaming on OBS, it will automatically go live on Vimeo, which is good, I guess. But I like to do this. So then when I hit go live on OBS, I need to go hit go live on Vimeo. It just lets me double check that it's connected. I'm ready to go. It just makes me feel better. So that uh, I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to put in the stream key here and paste it in. Same thing with the server, right? So I would copy it here, put it here, and hit OK. Now, there are other uh, settings that you need to do to make sure the stream is working smoothly. And again, I'm not the most proficient with OBS. But uh, I'll make sure I link some videos that I found super helpful, especially a video by Alpha Gaming. He does a lot of live streaming stuff, and I kind of just followed his video to set up all of my general things, like and my bit rate and all of these things that I really honestly don't understand how it works. So, hit that OK. And 
you're good to go. So now if I go start streaming, it says stop streaming. Down here it says we are live. And now if I go to Vimeo, you'll see here, here's the preview, right? Sorry, that's my phone. Uh, if you heard that, uh, but I'm not live yet. I have to hit go live for this to work. But this way I know things are running and good to go. Oh, that reminds me. Something I did make on the bottom, there is a stop all. So if something goes wrong, boom, it's black. At least I know there's no sound, no video, nothing. I also did this, technical difficulties, just in case. That way if something's going wrong, maybe on stage or you know something like that, the live streaming itself is fine, but we need to fix something on our end. I can stop everything and show this so then our audience knows don't leave, right? If it's this, they might think it was something on their end or something like that. So just a, a note. So for example, if I do this, now if I go here, you're gonna see it there. And then I'll hit go live. Don't forget, for all live streams, there's always delay, right? So everything that you see happening on your end, the audience sees like 10 seconds later. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're trying to interact with them and ask for comments or things like that. So if I, I hit go live, and now I'm actually streaming, right? It says live up here, and we're going, we're going, great. Now at the end of your stream, you wanna reverse that, right? So we went OBS to Vimeo, now we're gonna go Vimeo, OBS. Because if I stop the stream on OBS first, this will go black, which at the end of your event is not a huge deal, but you know, little things matter. So pretend we're at the end of the event, I would go here, end event first, and now see it's been automatically archived, and then I'll go back to OBS, and hit stop streaming. And there you go. Let me show you real quick two plugins that I found super useful for what we were doing at Dance Place. One is Transition Matrix. It basically lets you do a custom transition for every single scene. So for example, some scenes I wanted a straight cut, other scenes I wanted a fade, other scenes I wanted to use a uh, wipe that I had created through um, After Effects that had leaves going across because that kind of stayed in our Fortitude theme. And then when we were trying to show how much money we had raised, I wanted to use another plugin transition called Move. So first let me show you what uh, Transition Matrix looks like. So if I go up here, once I've installed it, it looks scary, but it's really not that bad. Basically, it just has all your scenes, right? And it's saying when I go from the countdown scene to countdown, there's nothing, but then countdown to the tutorial scene will always be this transition. Countdown to this default, which is just a cut, right? So I, so all the ones where I wanted a different custom transition, I could just go and find that scene. And let's say like from youth company to the next to this one, which would never happen because it's going backwards in time. But I, I could click on it, right click. I could select the transition I wanted. And then let's say a slide and then 300 milliseconds, let's say. So that's how that would work, right? So if I'm in this scene and I want, and I clicked on this scene, then this transition would happen. Uh, let me do one that's easier for me to track. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go, let's go from youth company to, here we go. So we'll do a slide and close that. So now I'm going to go find that scene. And now when I go here, it slides. Hello everyone. My name is right. Versus when I go into the next scene, it's a fade because I'd set that already versus if I go to here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Janice Marks. I use. That's actually funny. That's the other demo that I'd said. So that was not a good example. So from here <laughs> into, let's say, uh, here, it's a straight cut, right? So here going into, I don't know, here, straight cut. But if I go from here to here, it's a slide. So that's kind of how transition matrix works. It's really cool. I had a lot of fun programming it and it, it looks cool. It's a huge grid layout. Anyway, so with Move Transition, that's a plugin. It lets you kind of zoom in and out to from different scenes. So, for example, this 
is our live streaming speaker. I had my capture card here, right? I could then go to our uh, donation page and it would zoom in, and this is the wrong page because my, all my tabs are messed up, but I would have uh, our donation page pulled up here, and then the speaker is still here. So our uh, Christopher, he could be talking in real time. He would see the screen from downstage, and he could be commenting in real time on how much money we've raised so far, while our audience can also see those numbers. And I could click here again, and it would go away, and it would go back to just him. So it looked kind of news broadcasty, which I really liked. It was a cool effect. So those are probably the three biggest plug I those I think those are the three main plugins I used. Media controls, transition matrix, and move. Now as you can see we had all this captioning built in. So for all of our pre recorded content, we built the captions in. For live streaming, we did live captioning through something called Web Captioner, which I'll talk about in a moment. But just to show you to caption all these videos, we used YouTube. It's really cool. If you have a YouTube channel, it's free, try it. So if you go to YouTube and you upload the video, you make it unlisted so no one else can see it. So for example, this is the tutorial video that I had made at the very beginning of our gala. If I click on it here, I go to subtitles. Pretend this one isn't here yet because this one was made by, by a staff person, but it automatically creates a caption file for you. Sometimes it takes a couple hours, so you gotta give it time to process. But all you need to do is duplicate and edit. And then assign timings. And now you can adjust it. So you can say from here to here, uh, this word is wrong, right? Because it doesn't get it perfect. Uh, you can say it's from this time to this time, it got that wrong. But you can go through the entire thing and write in those captions. And then you just hit publish and it saves it. After that, I'm gonna discard that, but you would save it. After that, say like you upload the video, you had someone else help you do the captions. Now I can just go here. I can download just the caption file. I use SRT files. That's what Premiere Pro, the program that I use to edit recognizes. So I would just hit do that. It downloads it. I can bring it into Premiere Pro, so just to show you what that looks like. And now I just drag the caption file in, and now it's there. So I'm going to undo that. But like that's what this is. So now as I'm doing it, it's right there. And I had to resize it a little bit, but it's that easy to caption it if you use YouTube. It's pretty cool. And then I just re-exported the video, and then I added it back into OBS. So that's how we did all of the pre-recorded videos. Some of it I filmed and edited, others artists sent in, or we had testimonials from community members, and that was a really big part of the evening. I think there was probably 80% was pre-recorded content, and then 20% was a live performance or uh, talking from live, live people, from people who were uh, calling in live. Probably still not the right term, but you know what I mean. For live video, let me break this down a little bit more. So let's say we go to the scene. So like I said, I use capture cards, so I'm gonna um, use my my pin right now. I have to add it back in. For some reason, when you close down OBS, if it's not the exact same, because I had to unplug things to bring it over to the theater, all that, it messed up some of the sources, so I have to reconnect the sources every single time. So just be aware of that. Um, so you go here, you add a video capture device. I'm, I'm just gonna keep it that name, or you know what, let's let's call it something else. Uh, I can say okay. And then I'm gonna select my camera. There we go. And now hit okay. And so now this is what it looks like, right? So it's capturing from this camera that I'm recording from and also into my, com it's, it's so weird, right? It's very trippy. Anyways, um, I'm gonna drag it under because it works just like layers, right? So now you see the logo still there. Captions, I'll touch on that in a moment. Um, but now I'm gonna go here. I had the move transition. So I'm gonna take this JSU, copy that. Go here first, paste it. Go to the middle one where we have our give lively, paste it. And now, give me a moment, I'm gonna, so this was our donation page. I'm gonna pull it off to the side. And now, gonna resize this. 
If you hold down Alt or I think Command on Max, you can then like trim it. If I can put it here. Uh, let's see, my Give Lively page, it got mixed up. It, this is a screen capture, so here I'll show you how I did that. Oh, there you go, it worked. But let me show you how I made that, so I'll, I'll, I'll hide that. So I would go here, I would go to Window Capture. Window Capture will capture a specific like window or Chrome tab, versus Display Capture, I think, will capture the entire window, regardless of what's on it. So uh, the pros and cons of both. Um, for this one, I'll do display capture. I'll say donations like that. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, capture display two. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to hit OK. And now you see it. Now, this does not look great because you can still see my browser, all that. So if I go to my web browser, at least this, this is for Windows, if I hit F11, it makes it full screen. So now that goes away. All right. And now I can resize this here. And now it's next to it. And then this is just a purple background, a, a solid color one that I put here just to make it blend in more. All right? So now I go like that. And I can reposition this a little bit. So now if I go from here, it goes here and back. Voila. So that's how that looked. Um, and then for captions, again, this is a little funky because my windows were all out of sync. For live streaming captions, we use this website called webcaptioner.com. It's a free source. It's really great. If you can, if you end up using this, um, donate because this is such a great resource. Um, but all you need to do is hit start captioning. And now if I start talking, it will caption it as I go. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job as long as you don't talk too fast and you don't use too many unique words. So for example, people's names or other weird things like that, web capturing might not do a great job. Or if you start talking too fast and you slurry words, and then I can't really catch all the but Oh, okay, there it goes. So you have to sl talk slowly or slow down. I like to talk fast, so this was not great for me <laughs> but luckily uh, other people talked slower but basically I would then have this on my other screen so I'm gonna move this out of the way and then I added a screen capture here so properties here I did another display capture basically right and it's capturing this page and then you'll see here the words are showing up bring this back onto this window because I can only record one. So I then resized this window to kind of do this. And as you can see here, as I move it, as I change the size of the window, there we go. So now it fits up to three lines and I set it in web captioner. So if I stop talking, After a couple seconds, it'll skip up a couple lines, but that's enough to get rid of it over here. Isn't that cool? Anyways, so that's how we ended up doing um, live captioning. I would just have this pulled up on my third screen out of the way, but it would do its thing the entire time. And then I would just had to make sure that I put this on all of our scenes that had uh, live interactions with people. Oh, also pro tip, you can also copy. So if I copy this control C captions I could go here and I could paste it in if it wasn't uh, doing the right thing for whatever reason or if I was building a new scene instead of having to go back here and add another source and all that I could just paste it in and it would be good to go so from here to here let's see how much money we made oh my gosh so much money all right back to the theater boom just like that now for our this is so uh, distracting <laughs> uh, seeing me uh, but uh, for our two guests that were calling in we had to limit it to a certain number of people in the theater so we had a staff person in our office another staff person in the studio and they were both on laptops calling in through StreamYard. and so that was basically the exact same thing I did a screen capture of StreamYard. And then I had the captions underneath. So let's see. I don't think it's going to be correct here. Yeah. So I went like this. If you go here. So this is StreamYard. And I still have the studio. Because I didn't have to go live on StreamYard. I, but I did, went here. 
I just use this as kind of our like calling base, right? So I gave both of them a link to join this broadcast window. And I don't think this is going to let me because I'm already using the um, camera in OBS. Yeah, so it's not going to work right now. But basically, uh, you could call in here. And then if I click this, it would split the screen. So it looked like they were in that like broadcast studio, right? Then I would just have this on, again, my other window, kind of where I also had the web captioner going on. And then... StreamYard, uh, I just added another window capture. So let me just see StreamYard. We'll just fix it. No, first let me add a new one. Uh, let's do display capture. Number three. So right now this is my entire screen, but I only want to capture this little square, right? So I'm going to crop it in first. And then I can make it fit. And when I sized it for the actual thing, I did a much better job. I like made this window much smaller on my third screen so I can make this bigger so I didn't have to you know squeeze it in so much. But this is just a demo. So this basically I did it like this. And so when they called in, it looked like they were filling up the whole screen. But there was still room on the bottom for the captioning. And then we could hear them because we were uh, taking the computer sound through our audio device, playing it back in as the sound device or as the sound input so then we could hear it. Very convoluted. Again, this part, I don't think you're going to you're gonna need this for like a, a conversation or a, um, like a dance concert, but this is how we did this section. Um, oh, and then one quick thing. This was very annoying and like shout out to Alex, my coworker, for figuring this out on the fly but during our live stream we started to hear this really weird echo like we would hear it and then we would hear it again like t two seconds later and it created this really weird looping effect and at first it only showed up for us on our playback but then it ended up going into our live stream and it was uh the most stressful two three minutes of my life not really but it was stressful and we could not figure out what was going on until alex saw on vimeo that it was playing sound so it was really odd let me see if i can pull it up um so on vimeo here when you have your live stream this we had it muted so this was not playing music but he noticed there was a little sound icon up here which meant it was actually playing sound for some reason. So we did a quick Google and turns out you just need to go up here, right click and select mute site. And that fixed it right away. So if you do a test and you hear an echo in your event, uh, do that and that will probably fix it. I don't know why it does that. It's so stupid. I had it muted here. I don't understand why it would still be playing it, but the reason that loop was happening was because we were capturing our like computer audio, right? And playing it, feeding it back in. And for some reason, the Vimeo live stream page was playing the live stream. So we were getting that sound. And because there's always a delay in live stream, that's what was creating that echo effect. It's really, really weird. I don't know why that was happening, but Alex fixed it. Thank goodness. And that's basically it, I think, for the gala setup. We went over OBS, Vimeo, plugins, pre-recorded videos, live content. And then at the very, very end, we had a Zoom dance party, which was just a lot of fun. So everyone tuned in. We had someone DJing. And as people were dancing, they were getting spotlighted so everyone could see them. And they would go off. And it was a really fun way to end the event. But that is basically how I did it. So to like boil it down for someone that's trying to do a dance performance maybe and needs to do this, you really only need one scene for you, right? Assuming you're the uh, studio owner or the MC, right? So you would need one scene for to show you, and then you would just want a different scene for all the other videos that are going to be shown, right, for each piece. Because that way you could click from you talking, let's say here, and then you could go to and we're going to go to uh, Hip Hop 1, titled this. Let's see the piece.
and then it would play, right? And then you could go back to the same scene with you after it's done. Oh my gosh, that was so great. Good job, everyone. Now we're gonna go to Jazz 3, and then you would go to the next video, and that's how you could do it. And if you ever need to reorder your scenes, you can just go here, arrow up and down to change the order. Okay, that was a lot, but I think that is it. So I hope this was helpful, everyone. Again, these, these, these are uncharted territories for a lot of us, and this is by no means the best way to do it, but it worked really well. It was really high quality. You just have to make sure you have a good internet connection. So when we were in the theater, we were plugged into the router with an ethernet just to kind of make things as stable and as strong as possible. So if you have a bad internet connection, this won't work. Uh, so just make sure you have a stable connection and yeah, try it. Oh, when you do anything like this, dress rehearsals are so important. We did a dress rehearsal Thursday night and after that we had so many notes on the order and sequence and things that you think are going to be easy or obvious. You're going to find other things that were not obvious and you got to fix it or figure out a better flow or whatever it is. And it, what's nice is, again, through Vimeo, after I ended the live stream, it was automatically archived. I could send it to everyone for feedback so they could see how it actually looked when the live stream was happening because they were in the event, so they couldn't, right? Or if they had notes, they could watch it and take down more notes and send it to me that I would go make adjustments, all that stuff. I think my biggest takeaway though is do your dress rehearsal at least one or two days before your event. Don't do it the day before, don't do it the day of for sure because it's just going to stress you out. You want that extra buffer time to figure out things that need to be fixed or changed. Uh, if videos aren't done yet, you know you can put in a placeholder, just make sure you switch out the right videos, but doing it ahead of time, a test run will just make you feel better, more prepared, everyone else that needs to be on call, more prepared. And the more that you can uh, write out like worst case scenarios and what to do in the situations, the better you'll feel. Like we said, okay, what happens if all of us get sick so none of us can be in the theater? Okay, here is plan A, plan B, plan C. What happens if our internet goes down? Here's plan A, plan B, plan C. What happens if Jonathan gets sick but everyone else isn't? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. You know, if, if the dancer gets sick, well, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, if, you know, all these different things, we try to plan out every single scenario. So if it did happen, we wouldn't freak out. We would already know what to do. None of those things happen, thank goodness, but it's good to have those things in the back of your head just in case. Okay, so here's the Cliff Notes version of what I just said. So going from OBS to Vimeo, just make sure you get the stream key from Vimeo to OBS in order to make that connection work. You need to make sure you have the premium subscription for Vimeo, which I understand is a little more expensive, but I also think it's more secure, it's more reliable, it's easy to use. So depending on what you're doing, it might be worth it. If not, you can try YouTube or Facebook, but you're probably gonna get kicked off your live stream because of music copyright if this is a dance concert kind of situation. So just kind of keep that in mind. Whatever computer you're using, make sure you have a strong and stable internet connection. I would recommend at least two monitors. Uh, and you want a more powerful computer, if possible, to run OBS. You can't do this really with like a Chromebook or a lighter and laptop. I don't think you're gonna really struggle, especially if, if you have multiple tabs open and other windows open. So just keep that in mind as well. I don't really know what specs you would need as a minimum, but the more powerful the computer, the better. Desktop for sure, if possible, over laptop. I would highly recommend getting the Media Control plugin and Transition Matrix plugin. Media Control was fine. We could not find Transition Matrix for our Mac computer, which is why we end up using my desktop computer. So just keep that in mind. And all the links to those plugins will also be in the video description if you want to check them out. If you want to do captioning for pre-recorded videos, I highly recommend using YouTube and their built-in uh, subtitles captioning feature. And then just taking that file and dropping it into something like Premiere Pro to line up with your videos. For any live capturing, you're going to need a camera and connect it to your computer with something like a capture card potentially or some kind of utility from the camera manufacturer and then add that in as a video source in OBS. For live captioning, we use Web Captioner. That's a free software and just do a, a screen capture and then bring it into OBS and you can 
adjust the size. That is the end of this video, everyone. That was a lot, but I hope you found it helpful. If you have questions about OBS or StreamYard or capture cards or Vimeo, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to make videos on those specific things because I didn't want to make this a like hour long tutorial video because that's just a lot. Um, but if you have questions about how to best uh, create your live stream event, let me know. I realize OBS can be overwhelming for a lot of people. So again, StreamYard is a great option or if you can just premiere a Facebook or YouTube video. Those are all ways you can show your students dancing, make it seem like a live streamed event. Uh, so check those out. Facebook premieres, YouTube premieres, StreamYard, or OBS and Vimeo. I recently hit 500 subscribers, so thank you, thank you, thank you everyone that is watching. Please make sure you like this video. Tell your friends to subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button so you know when new videos come out. And I'll see you next time. Five, six, seven, eight.